Hi there, and welcome back to the second episode of our new series, Walk and Talk, here on Novartis campus in Basel. I'm Max, I'm happy that you can join us today, and we're going to introduce you to some of the faces behind Novartis. Today, Matthias Friedrichsen joined me. He's one of our senior scientists here in Basel, and he's been with the company for more than 13 years now. Glad you could make it. Hi. Thank you very much. How are you doing? Doing fine, thanks. Okay, great. Maybe we can start with some warm-up questions for you. Absolutely. Pretty tough decision here. Pineapple on pizza, is it tasty as hell or is it actually the eighth deadly sin? It's tasty as hell, but it's a cultural collapse. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. It's a cultural clash. I love pizza, I love pineapple. The two are wonderful, separate entities. Putting them together is an experiment. As an experimentalist, I like experiments. But I have to say, you know, I prefer my pizza with mozzarella, basil, maybe some prosciutto. Uh, speaking of experiments, you being a scientist, are you more like a mostly rational person or someone who relies on his gut feeling? That, that's, a, that's a really interesting question that uh, we almost on a daily basis are sort of working on with, is the wish. As a scientist, you're rooted deeply in rational thought and rational thinking and rational design. However, the scientific enterprise, the science we do, we're often stepping into the unknown where there is no roadmap as such. And so I always have to, to rely on my intuition to, to say, I, I don't know why this is right. I don't know, don't have any, any evidence that it is right, but I have a really good feeling that I think it is right. But it's always built on a, on a big basis of, of, of rational thinking and rational construction. But at some point you sort of jump into, into the unknown and then you are guided by your own intuition. So it's more kind of a healthy mix for you. I think we as scientists are trained very strongly in the rational mm -hmm. and we're under trained on the intuitive and so it's a question of training both. Going by bike or by car? Oh I bike a lot yeah that's my 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 hobby. How many bikes do you own? Um, one too few and, and one too many for my wife. <laughs> okay I see. Let's start with the real questions right now. Um, your job title actually says senior investigator. That kind of like sounds like, you know, the CSI Miami staff thing. <laughs> Can you elaborate on what a senior investigator actually does for a living? So, so uh, typically a senior investigator is a person that has been with a company a fair number of years, like myself, a little bit more than a decade, but it doesn't have to be like that. It's not a seniority thing. But what you have done in your career that, to that point is displayed and shown that you are capable of coming with new ideas, of translating them into a, a project, that you have the creativity and the capability to bring new ideas forward, that you can build them from the very sort of, the, or the figment of, of, a fas, of a fascinating idea, to really construct a project team around it, to push it forward. But the, what defines perhaps the more senior people is that they are, they have maybe a little bit more a much more broader knowledge base. We tend to integrate a lot more of the different disciplines. Um, we are, generally speaking, quite expert at something. But you build up an expertise which is very diverse by virtue of the projects you've done here. And that is something which characterizes a senior investigator, I think. Broad thinking, highly collaborative, that you realize that you cannot really make a project work without relying on so many people outside of your direct influence that you need to, to kind of bring into your project team to get behind your idea and to move it forward. What is, what is your specific study background? What do I have to do? What, what is your background? Let's start with this. I, I'm a chemist by training, so a synthetic chemist. So I, I, my training went through various degrees. I did a bachelor degree where I, I studied, I deep, it was a very broad degree. I did a very broad, um, what they call in the, in the United States, a liberal arts degree, where you study also philosophy, but languages, but also science. But then eventually you specialize in science. And I was really interested in, in organic chemistry. Um, and then I went on to do a PhD in what they call synthetic organic chemistry, which is really the way of constructing new molecules. And we were very focused on natural products, so products that come from plants like the ones behind us where botanical plants or medicinal plants have some sort of property and they have a molecule in there that is synthesizable. And then I came here as a very sort of a standard chemist, 
then you get trained in what's called medicinal chemistry, which is the application of those skills of constructing things with the purpose of putting them into a sort of a drug discovery context. But then starts the sort of the adventure. Because the job that you do now, you don't specifically train for anywhere. I came into the company because I was expert at something that I don't do anymore. And that's kind of an interesting journey because I think many people go through that journey. I have been fortunate in perhaps following a little bit my intuition, we talked about it earlier, that I said I wanted to do something new. And then I had the opportunity, some friendly people around me that said, yes, we will allow you to do that. And then I developed there, and then I developed to a new thing, and a third thing, and now I find myself in a position which has not so much to do with chemistry anymore. Uh, speaking of the long term, uh, let's wind the clocks back 25 years. Assuming back then somebody would have told you that you were going to work for Novartis someday, what would have been your reaction? I probably wouldn't have been totally surprised that I would work for a company like this. Novartis, certainly not. I wouldn't have thought about that. But back then I was actually really interested in studying medicine. So I, I thought my destination would have been a hospital. So I think it would have been more, more my thing to, to, to become a doctor. I was really interested in surgery, fixing stuff. And then, um, yeah, fate would have it differently. Your job today is still related to medicine, right? Just from another perspective. Yeah, I think what's, what's interesting about that perhaps is that I think the... I think it's unsatisfactory from a, med, from a, from a medical perspective. <laughs> that's not unsatisfactory, that's not true. But to fix a problem without knowing the root cause. So I'm very attracted to the understanding of finding the cause of what's going wrong and then fixing it at that level. Of course, I don't want to discredit the surgery. That's an important branch of medicine. But I was more personally more attracted towards the, the um, element of discovering the basics, the mechanisms that drive the disease. You know, in spite of so many years of research, uh, we, we understand very little of the human body still. And that's, that's ultimately very humbling, but very fascinating. As we already mentioned, you've been with the, with the company for more than 13 years now. And this is uh, actually the third CEO you're seeing. Is that true? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So, uh, Vasna Razimhan, he's uh, in office since February 2018. And on his agenda, he uh, has, uh, for example, cultural change here at Novartis based on curiosity, inspiration, and unbossing people, which is actually one of your tasks as a senior investigator uh, in terms of your team. Um, how do you perceive this cultural change? I think it is extremely welcome. I, I think it is the only way we can run a corporation like this. I don't think there's any other way we can run it nowadays. So we have been sort of unbossing for quite a while. What I really, really welcome, and I think that's amazing the steps that, that Vaz is taking for the company is to think about the, how do you sort of unleash this organization beyond the boundaries of, of hierarchies, of who is your boss, why is your boss the boss, and so on and so forth. So I think I, I can't really imagine any other way of doing it. I think now people are to a much greater degree driven by purpose. Why am I doing this? And why am I not doing something else? And I think if you really sense an identification with your purpose, that you really like your purpose, you're driven by your purpose, there's no better way to be motivated to do something great. There's no better way to be really excited about coming to work every day. It no longer becomes a chore to come to work, but really an exciting direction. This is so important for the future of the company. And it's also a great way to think, is that a good way to attract talented people? To say, well, here you have, you are, you're empowered to go towards a goal that you sense is purposeful. If you can identify with that goal, that's terrific. Because there's so much you can do as an individual uh, in the context of this company, but in teams. And if you're really empowered, if you're free to go and to make your own decisions, then I think you can accomplish great things together with other people that have the same degree of empowerment. Speaking of opportunities and excitement and passion, Uh, what do you love about your job the most? What do, you, what do you love, if you had to choose? What I like the most about a job is the people. 
it's, I, I, I love my science. I love the science that we're doing. And I love the fact that I'm able to do a scientific discipline which is so complex and so exciting and so potentially undiscovered. But I can be happy about that all my life. But I think the possibility of putting together different backgrounds into a team to sit down and think about how you want to accomplish that team, that goal, <clears throat> and to then work in a team to accomplish that, that is probably the most satisfactory and the thing that I'm really excited about, coming to work every day. Is there anything that you do not like about your job? Anything you might probably hate about your job? What I dislike about the job, and that's something that we, we're trying desperately to change, is, is bureaucracy. Bureaucratic decisions, like decisions that don't make any sense or procedures that don't make much sense but are there because the, co the, the company uh, has decided that that was a good thing a while ago and continue to do something. Uh, but I, I'm really confident about the future in that regard because I think the company is taking steps to reduce that and it's part of this empowerment culture as well that I can take decisions that I don't no longer need other people to take for me. Before we started the interview, you told me that you are have been married for, for over 20 years now and that you have three kids, right? Uh, what's, what's the situation at home like? Is it, what do you talk about, for example, with, with your wife? Do you talk about your work a lot at home, for example, uh, in the evening when having dinner? You're right. I, I've been, been married for, for, for many years uh, and my wife is not a scientist. So I can't really talk too much about my work at, at home. But I, what I like to talk to her about is, is people aspects. She's a, she's a coach, so she helps other people find their careers and their changes that they want. And I think it's really fascinating to exchange. It's very interesting to discuss you know, the cultural things that I, have, that I sense, sense, sense every day to what she senses every day and that they're Ultimately, it's a lot about the people again, about how people are progressing. But really, honestly, I don't want to talk about work when I go home. I have three wonderful children, and around the dinner table, it's the, ta it's the time when we five are together. And that's the time where I want to hear what they have to do, what they have done in the day. When your children ask you, Daddy, what's your job? How do you explain that? <laughs> that's interesting because they they think about medicine as the, the stuff they get when they have a cough, like cough syrup and things like that. So naturally they ask, do you make cough syrup? And I have to say, I don't really make cough syrup. But uh, I try to explain to them what it is that I'm trying to do in the sense of starting from <clears throat> a, a kind of a curious question. What are we curious about? And then trying to understand that. Because that's my job now, is really understanding why are diseases diseases. And that's, that's really exciting to try to get a child's capt captivate their imagination to think this is something that I never thought about before. What does it mean, that problem? What does that problem mean? And then I try to explain to them, well, that's kind of what daddy does every day. But he does it in a different context. And we're trying to figure out why some people are sick and why we can try to find out whether we can find a medicine that ultimately becomes something like a cough syrup. So that's how we work with that. Last question for the, for the interview. Uh, we would like to, to conduct a little thought experiment. Um, let's assume you're granted two wishes. What do you spend your two wishes on? Two wishes. That's a very hard question. Not three, not one. <laughs> not, not, no. It's two. Two questions. Uh, two. I, I don't know. I would sort of, I, I would, um, I, I would, uh, I would divide one question, may I do it this way? One is for, for work and one is for, um, for, for, for other stuff. And so for work, my, my, my one wish would be that we are able to sort of crack the problem that we're, we're trying to deal with, that we manage that because it's so complex and so difficult and such an opportunity. So I, I the would, problem right now, yeah, actually. What I'm trying to do my scientific right direction that I would like to take. That's one. Number two would be sort of non-work. And my biggest wish is that my, my children find in their lives what would motivate them to be happy, whatever that is. Wonderful. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you. For being with us today.
Thank you. For Thanks a lot, Matthias. Having me. Thank you for stopping by. Very much. Well, that's been the second episode of our Walk and Talk series on Campus Basel. Uh, certainly glad that you've been with us today. And uh, in case you haven't seen our first video, uh, we recommend you check it out on our page and we're going to link it in the comment section below. Thank you for spending some of your life here with us and have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.